Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about National Medical Commission Act 2019. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about National Medical Commission Act of 2019, how it evolved, what are the chapterization of NMC Act of 2019 and the statutory bodies under this legislation. The National Medical Commission Act of 2019, which was passed by the government, is considered as a landmark legislation in the health sector. It replaced earlier law governing the medical education and registration regulation in India, which was Indian Medical Council Act of 1956. This NMC Act of 2019 brought a significant changes both in medical education, how the institutions are registered, how the registered medical practitioners are governed under this legislation. This legislation has been considered as a paradigm shift in the medical field. Let's talk about the brief history of medical education in India and specifically. I am focusing on allopathy. The pre-independence era, that is before independence, the Medical Council of India was established in 1934. This was established under a legislation called as Indian Medical Council Act of 1933. This Medical Council of India was modelled under the General Medical Council of the United Kingdom. If you need to understand about the medical education and registration of the RMPs in India, you need to understand the constitution of India. As soon as we got independence in 1947, the health and education was divided. Many of the powers was kept with the central, some of them were in the state and some of them were in the concurrent list. If you look at the higher education, including medical education, came under the entry 11 and health under entry 6 under the state list that is list 2 that means education and health were under the state purview that means the state will form the rules regulation and legislation they had the power however on the 42nd amendment of the constitution passed in 1976 immediately after the emergency this removed the education from the state list and was placed under the concurrent list that is entry number 25. Unfortunately, this dichotomy of placing the education and health one in the state, another in the concurrent list is haunting till date. The main reason being is the health considered to be the state subject. Various states are investing very meagerly into health because it is considered as an investment. Immediate returns do not come easily. Any government which lasts for five years feels that investing in health means an expenditure. Hence, many of the state do not consider investing in health. Unfortunately, the few states who invest in health are being burdened by the neighboring states. For example, Karnataka state is investing in health. Invariably, many neighboring states, North Indian states, Northeastern states do migration or else they come from all the way from that place to Karnataka for treatment. And this causes a huge burden on the state. And that means this division of the powers, especially with regard to health, from the state versus central versus concurrent has been a huge problematic under the constitution of India that too in the federal structure. Hence, if you look at the health, if you look at the variables, the outcomes of health variables, they are invariably better in the South India compared to North India. That means the states which are investing in health are doing well. And those states who do not invest in health their parameters and indicators are very bad. This is the time we need to do amendments with regard to constitution of India 
and health also need to come under the purview of concurrent list at least or else under the central list. But unfortunately at this point of time, as on today, the health is under state and higher education that is including medical education is in the concurrent list. And in the post-independence, in 1956, the Indian Medical Council Act was passed. Again, there were amendments made and then it was aligned with our Constitution of India. That means, under the Indian Medical Council Act, both education and health was under state, hence the complete freedom was given. But, the education indicators with regard to number of doctors, available health human resources were a huge variation across the country. Hence, it was placed under the concurrent list in 1976. Immediately, in 1982, a Mehta committee was formed. They discussed about with regard to medical education and they reviewed how the medical education has to be done. They recommended an important reform in the medical education such as having an entrance exam for undergraduate medical education and also for the post-graduation. And they also proposed the revision of UG and PG curriculum. Similarly, immediately after few years, Bajaj committee was formed. This is basically to address the healthcare, human resources, production and management. They recommended that they should not the medical colleges should not be dealt by the general university. They recommended to have a health university very specifically to govern medical colleges. And also they focused on how to increase human resources with specifically to health. And in 2008, under the leadership of Sri Honorable Manmohan Singh, knowledge National Knowledge Commission was formed. They recommended converting the MCI into full-fledged professional body, conducting examination and licensing of medical professional only. But in 2011, the National Commission of Human Resources for Health Bill 2011 was proposed. And this had planned to dissolve, complete the Medical Council of India, Nursing Council of India, Dental Council of India, Pharmacy Council and Rehabilitation Council. And they wanted to come up with the health council as a umbrella term or umbrella body which will regulate all the health related human resources. Unfortunately, this was withdrawn. And then a high level expert group on universal health coverage of 2011 was formed. They recommended establishing more medical institutions in public sector and reserving 50% of the seats in private medical colleges for the local communities was proposed. And then in 2016, Parliamentary Standing Committee on Health observed the present focus of Medical Council of India is only licensing medical college and corruption. Hence, the Supreme Court of India authorized the central government to replace Medical Council of India to monitor medical education system in India with the help of five specialized doctors from July 2017 that was called as Board of Governors. National Medical, Medical Commission Bill 2017 was proposed but it was referred to Parliamentary Standing Committee because there was a discussion about whether the health should be governed under National Medical Commission Act and whether it should be placed under the concurrent list. And at the same time, in the same year, National Health Policy 2017 emphasized to have a new regulatory body for medical education and development of human resources. And the Indian Medical Council Ordinance was passed 2018, removing completely the Medical Council of India and then National Medical Commission Ordinance came into picture. And finally, the National Medical Commission Act of 2019 was passed. Now let's understand the why this amendment was required. The first and the foremost was corruption charges. The Supreme Court of India authorized the central government to replace the Medical Council of India because the Medical Council of India was monitoring only the medical colleges and allotting various seats for UG and PG and the corruption was at the heights. Hence, the Supreme Court said that we need to clean the system. 
At the same time, we need to address the health inequalities across the country. Not only that, the Supreme Court also made an observation. This Inspector Raj, that is, harassing medical colleges or demanding bribe to give more UG seats and PG seats was not welcoming. And this came in the way of development of good human resources with regard to health. There was no focus on public health perspective from Medical Council of India. They focused on their money only. And unfortunately, the medical education was far from the poor people. Hence, democratization of medical education was planned. And finally, they also focused on medical education fees needs to be regulated, both in private and also in the government colleges. And they also recommended to have a single entry exams for undergraduate and also for the postgraduate and exit exam. Regulation of medical education, institution and professional was planned under a comprehensive legislation, my dear friend, that is National Medical Commission Act. If you look at the timeline, the National Medical Commission bill was introduced in 2019 and then the National Medical Commission Bill 2019 was passed in Lok Sabha, that is in July 29th, 2019. And in Rajya Sabha, it was passed on August 1st of 2019. And finally, it was passed on the August of 2019, my dear friends. The National Medical Commission had various bodies, that is statutory bodies and members. I'll be briefly discussing now. As you know, the National Medical Commission was passed on 8th of August 2019. And once the president has given the assent, let's look at the chapterization of this legislation. The National Medical Commission Act has 61 sections and 8 chapters as mentioned above. The first chapter is preliminary, that is section 1 to 2. The second is immediately the overarching body, that is National Medical Commission, that is basically from section 3 to 12. Here. How the National Medical Commissions are formed, who are the members, who are the ex-officio members and also who are the private members, how they are appointed, what are the office terms, how they are removed and what are the powers of this National Medical Commission is discussed under Chapter 2. Chapter 3 is the Medical Advisory Council. This is a council which will advise the National Medical Commission and this Medical Advisory Council is a platform where the state council will come and discuss how the National Medical Commission and the State Medical Council or Commission have a platform to discuss, dialogue, debate and how to synchronize the National Medical Commission Act along with the State Medical Commission or the legislation so that there is an harmony between both the state and the centre with regard to federal structure. Chapter 4 is on national examination that is both for the entry exam called as NEET and also the exit exam for especially with regard to undergraduate examination. And finally, they, there is a chapter 5 which discusses about autonomous bodies or called as autonomous boards. There are four boards which are formed. I will discuss shortly. And chapter 6 discusses about the recognition of medical qualification that is from section 35 to 40. Sec the chapter 7 discusses about the grants, audit and accounts and finally the miscellaneous that is from section 45 to 61. This is how the National Medical Commission Act 2019 has been chapterized. So in simple word you need to understand the National Medical Commission Act starts with the NMC that is the main body which will regulate the medical institutions, education, regulation of the doctors. Below the National Medical Commission, there is an advisory board called as MAC, also called as Medical Advisory Council and these both will discuss and discuss about the single NEET exam and also the exit exam. There are four autonomous boards which, has, which are formed under this legislation which will look into the UG, PG curriculum, how the exams are conducted, how they are formed and there is a MARB and finally EMRB that is Ethics and Medical Registration Board. This is how the NMC, if you look at the organogram, the top is the chairperson along with the secretary. Secretary and the rest of the NMC body. 
and there is a if you look at the medical advisory council and the four autonomous boards board for ug board for bg medical assessment and rating boards and president for ethics and medical registration board each of these four boards they have one president and two full time members and two part time members here the two full time members will work for four years part time members for two years none of the members will be reappointed in this nmc not only that there is an important clause which has been placed that means after finishing their term they will not take up any assignment in private medical institution if they had dealt the case regarding this institution for the period of next 2 years this is how the nmc is placed and medical advisory council and the autonomous board now let's understand the preamble of national medical commission here this preamble means what is the reason this legislation has been formed the preamble is very clear this is an act to provide medical education system to improve the access for quality and affordable medical education ensure availability of adequate and high quality medical professionals in all parts of the country that promotes equitable and universal health care that encourages community health perspective and makes services for medical professionals accessible to all citizen and also that promotes national health goals encourage medical professionals to adopt latest medical research in their work and also to contribute to the research they also has an important agenda of objective periodic and transparent assessment of these medical institutions that is colleges facilitate maintenance of medical register for india with regard to doctors enforce high ethical standard in all aspects of medical services that is also flexible to changing needs that is if there is a change in research with regard to medical education and also health services that need to be flexible and adopted and also effective grievance redressal mechanism to conclude my dear friends national medical commission act 2019 is considered as a paradigm shift from medical council of india to national medical commission which is a pro people legislation focusing on public health perspective although health is a state subject and medical education is in concurrent list national medical commission act 2019 is a comprehensive legislation which addresses both the medical education and also to some extent health this legislation is new and requires time to implement the legislation is implemented and monitored by four important statutory bodies they are autonomous body this is how the nmc the organogram that is nmc national medical commission and medical advisory commission and also the boards four autonomous boards thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe